Hey, good morning, everybody. Hope everybody is well. Happy Tuesday. I've been talking about this idea of mentality, feelings. It's so important to. It's so important to understand it, especially if you're dealing with other people. That it's all about feelings. This is a huge issue, families. Huge. Huge. With so many. It happens all the time. We try to be right. When at the end of the day, being right makes the other person feel bad. And so as a result, we're right. But they don't buy into it because they don't want to. They feel bad. This happened to me once. I'll never forget. I think I told this story here. I was sitting, speaking once about some holiday. And the mom brought her son, who was an atheist. Now, I've never really met a real atheist. People are agnostic. People are ignorant. People are questioning. People are struggling. That's called being a human being. But knowing that there's no God, like knowing with proof. So usually when I'm dealing with, when I'm talking to somebody who is, you know, especially younger, that it's a self-proclaimed atheist, like, so he comes after the speech and he's giving me like, you know, there's no God and this is all a bunch of made up stuff and, you know, the usual, the rabbis are trying to control, blah, blah, blah. Now, as a result of, as, as opposed to me just sort of like doing the right thing, which would have been to hear the person out and to try to be helpful at the place where they're coming out. I didn't do that. I don't know. The lawyer in me just like took over. And we started picking apart each argument, just everything they trained us. <laughs> Isolate the argument, pick it apart to show the logical flaws, destroy it, next, next, next. We went piece by piece by piece, round and round and round, standing outside that synagogue, 10, 1030, 11, 1130, just nonstop. And I was like, just shooting everything that I had at him. And it was over and he had nothing else to say. And I remember walking away feeling like, you're such a moron. Yeah, maybe you won the point. Maybe you won the battle. But you lost the war. Because it's about feelings. And the mind, in many ways, follows the feelings. I know we like to think otherwise. Very few people. Although many people think that. Very few people make decisions based on intellect alone they go oh that was wrong I'm out very few people look at like they look themselves in the mirror and they go mm, I, I, I put on too much weight oh I'm done and they have no more need to eat very few people the feelings it's all about feelings and so at the end of at the end of of this conversation as opposed to having a person feel empowered to search for God to search for depth God's hard it requires a lifetime of of, of depth and thinking and searching and as opposed to encouraging a person who was struggling to search As opposed to that, I I beat him. But left him more disempowered. Left him more 
focused on trying to left him left him feeling more disenfranchised with his own religion that's how it works we have to be living in the game of feelings when we talk to people we have to be living in the game of feelings when we understand ourselves the victim mentality the microwavable dinner if you will is our way of being okay without with being okay with what we have because we are not empowered enough to fight for more we got to know that we got to understand that that sometimes I'm not pushing myself because there's some other feeling that I have been okay with, that I feel comfortable in, that has taken over. And if I feel that, I'm going to get hooked on that. And that getting hooked on mediocrity is going to allow me to stay in a place that's going to prevent me from pushing to something because I've gotten used to that. And if I bring it out in other people, then I may win the point, but I'm going to lose the person in this area. But just having that understanding and that sensitivity to the way we work is so critical to know when we have to break it. When we're giving to others, we have to know when we're getting when we're tripping. Right? When we're engaged in conversation and all we're doing is pushing the person further away from the very thing we want to bring them close to. When the guy stops me after the speech and says to me, There's no God, what do I I I, I want nothing more than him to find God. God's hard. I want nothing more than to talk to him. And when I'm done, for him to be like, whoa, you're right. <laughs> Holy cow. But all I did was push him further away because I wasn't fully aware in my mind that feelings are what's going to drive this guy's behavior. Maybe I can go toe-to-toe -to -toe intellectually with this guy because maybe I've thought about it longer than him. Maybe I've, maybe I've got 20 years on the guy. I don't know. The kid clearly had other reasons why he was upset at, at God. He didn't fully think through all the implications of atheism. He's clearly rejecting his family or his school, and he's using God because that gets a rise out of people. Had I just thought about that, I would have totally shifted my strategy. But he's not rejecting. He doesn't know anything about God. I mean, like, this guy's 20 years old. He wasn't like a 20-year-old mini Einstein. He was like a regular dude. He's not holding in all the arguments pre, I mean, po po um, for, pro, or anti. He, he doesn't know. So the very thing that I wanted was just to draw him closer. I ended up achieving the opposite because I forgot that how you feel is what drives behavior. And so if we're, if we're in this game, we've got to always keep that in mind. Making the kid feel bad about cleaning his room is only going to push him away from cleaning his room. Making the kid feel bad, making the spouse feel bad, making the parent, making people feel bad about stuff will only drive them further away from the very thing that we want to make, bring them closer to, which is why I made them feel bad about it. But we have to understand that for ourselves, not doing something because we feel bad is not a reason not to do something. Feeling like I don't want to do it, feeling like I'm overwhelmed, the disempowerment that goes along with an experience we've had with something, the memory of something, is holding us back from achieving the life that we can achieve.
That's the victim mentality. The fact that I may feel comfortable giving up because I've gotten used to that. And maybe in the past, it was forced on me. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe in the past, it was forced on me. Maybe in the past, the environment around me pushed me down. But now I may be 10, 20 years older. Now I may have graduated high school. Now I may not be in ninth grade. I don't know. Now my life is different. And the circumstances that were once pushing me down are now gone. I've seen this with, with a friend of mine. I have a good friend of mine who is a fairly senior person in a fairly nice sized company. It's a family, pretty much a family owned business. And he's well regarded in that place, thank God. Good guy. And I'm watching him grow, and he's telling me about his career. And recently something happened where he really could solve it, he really could help. But he didn't come from a very, he, how do I say it? How do I say it in a way to hide it also? He, he doesn't have a lot of real confidence. Right, he has, he, he didn't come from a background that was very strong economically. You know, some kids that grow up in a world where they have an incredible amount of financial confidence. He doesn't. I'm not saying he's the most humble guy. And so he's like waiting to get permission. And I'm trying to tell him that like, it ain't coming. It's not the way business works sometimes. They don't give you permission. You take responsibility. Usually in a business, you gotta ask for forgiveness, not for permission. But he has this feeling of, well, if they don't give me permission, like, I can't do it. Like, if someone appoints me, they promote me, they make me in charge, I could do it then. But just to step into the role, just to take this on, now it comes from a world where he never felt like he was at the head of the class. It's a feeling. It's a feeling. I can't do that without permission. Sometimes it's appropriate. Sometimes it's not. But the feeling of, I can't do it. I know I could do it, but I can't do it. That's pretty familiar. And he's struggling. Because he knows he can. And it would do really well. And he would do really well. And no one's going to hand the permission. No one's going to stop from all the politics and say, you do it. But he has a feeling that was given to him, if you will, because he wasn't the smartest kid in the class. And he didn't come from the background of where he could do whatever he wanted. So now he's stuck. This internal comfortable feeling of, if they didn't tell me I should, then I won't, that keeps him, that holds him back, but that feels familiar, that was, if you will, more appropriate when he was younger, and now as he gets older, those constraints don't take place anymore. He's free. And he can go do it. Except that he has the feeling that he's got to break. Pay attention to your feelings. Pay attention to how you feel about things. And ask yourself, how did I get this feeling? Where did it come from? Like, why don't I want to do this? Why don't I want to take on challenge? Why don't I want to do this? It's going to give me more. It's going to make me greater. It's going to make me deeper. Why don't I want to do it? What you'll find many times is because it's part of your memory. And in the memory, there was a moment where it didn't work out. Okay, we'll talk about it. All right, everybody, have a great day. God's help. We can't wait to see you again tomorrow. Have a great, great day.